chosen tonight, so um, please plan to be here for that. We're kicking that off tonight. Also, um, there's been, there been a slide up for a few weeks about the holiday food boxes, and that's our mission project for October. Um, $25 covers the box of food. Um, remember last week I told you guys viral cut ham, green beans, mac and cheese. It's just got a lot of good food in it that would usually cost $80 to $90. But this is through the Caring Center, and it's $25 a box. So if you want to give any amount to Terry Mack, um, he's collecting that. We'll do that again through the month of October. Um, also, there's a sign-up sheet over there for uh, the Fall Festival at Bryan. It's Sunday, November the 6th from 1 to 4. And if you would like to volunteer your time to help man a booth for the classrooms, if you would just sign up, and I can let them know how many people can help that day, and we'll, um, I'll get a schedule together for that. Uh, do we have anything else? Yes. Um, it's October now. We still got two shoes <coughs> left. If you have not had a chance to pick up one, or some items just to fill, we're trying to finish filling out those shoe boxes. Um, there's still been a <coughs> we'll take donations that way. But also this month, we're trying to focus on raising the money for our postage. I've estimated, best I can, that we would probably have about 66 boxes. Um, for a long time, they did not go for the postage. Last year, they had to go up to nine. This year, it's 10. So we'll need about $660 thereabouts to post it. So we could be taking that. And if we just finish filling out some of this stuff, we'll be, uh, I think, in really good shape to fill about 66 shoe boxes this year. Anything else? What else?
always great to see your day come and be able to gather with your people and be in your house and come to worship. Well, as always, we pray that what we do will always be done in spirit and truth in the way that glorifies and honors you. We thank you for the privilege of prayer and the time that we can come and bring these petitions and needs before you. And as many of these are great, as far as any of these are not, in the sense that, that man may think of them, but these who are suffering, these who are afflicted, these who have the various needs of the problem, Father. We know it's troublesome. We know it may be causing sorrow and sadness in their lives. We pray, Father, that you intervene. Bring to them that which they need, whether it be health, the body, the soul, the spirit. Maybe some relationship, Father, that's going astray. Maybe even despairing of life itself. Father, we know you're always available. You're able to bring to us your presence, Father. It's always good. We continue to pray for our nation. We thank you, Father, that in a few weeks, We'll have opportunity as a free country to vote for those who lead us. Pray, Father, you're directing even now. Thoughts and prayers for those who study them. Make sure they vote in a way that matters. Please and you. And put those in office, Father, that do the meeting that you desire them to do. So, Father, one day they'll be fully accountable for all they've said and done. So that also will we, Father, put it in that place of power. For those who are just doing what needs to be done in various capacities around our world, and especially we thank you for our missionaries. It's called by you. Set, Father, by you and the Lord, sustained by the offerings of your people. We pray for them and wherever they may be and whatever the situation they, they find themselves in. They're free to share the gospel, free, Father, to share the ministry you call them. And thank you for allowing us to be a part of that work. Also, Father, we know that there, there are those, what do you call them, military men, first responders, policemen, they're doing the job so, so uh, unlike what means at times. People just aren't aware of what good they do. Pray for them and watch care of what they do and to keep us safe from all the man that's there. Thank you once again for those with him. Father, as we look around at the summer vintage, school back in, things are changing, the seasons are changing, Father, yet your precious love for us is still the same. The desire, the prayer that we serve you and the ministry, Father, is always the same for us. We pray, Father, you take charge this day. Receive the glory and praise is right honor to you. We give you the glory for it all. Now, if I pray for Corey, that she will get her um, voice back. <coughs> Full force. So let's all, say, uh, let's all stand, and we're going to start with uh, 335, um, which is standing on the promises. Everybody stand. The words are on the screen. Or page 335. Savior as my all in all. Stay. 
Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. I assure you, among those born of women, no one is greater than John the Baptist has appeared. But the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Amen. Folks, have you ever looked for something for a long time and you just finally just give it? I know I do that all the time. I, yeah. Usually I find it right where I left it, which is where I forgot it. Right. Because you could not find that special something, you begin to go and look for something else. <laughs> something else might have been less special, or you hope it turns out to be even better. And this does happen in all aspects of our lives. It happens quite often in our search for those things that especially that we want to make our lives better. Now football teams look for another coach and the team's not winning. Employers look for another employee when the work's not getting done. TV studios look for another anchor when the ratings drop. Yeah. And certainly it can happen and does happen in our personal relationship as well. Men look for that perfect woman who looks good, is a great cook, and, and uh, doesn't talk too much. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Women look for their knight in shining armor who, who sweeps her off her feet and takes out the garbage without being told. And we know how that turns out. And yeah. Sometimes they end up looking for another. It seems that we have certain expectations about a friend or you know, church or things that happen. Maybe a, maybe a person or a thing takes place. When our expectations for those are not met, we begin to look for that other car. I have that, had that problem quite a bit in the past. Look for another house, a costly one upside and downside. You're looking for another job, maybe sometimes another friend. Unfortunately, all too often, another, another spouse. And in our, our Christian lives, sometimes we're out looking for another church. In our text, John and the nation of Israel has been looking for and expecting the Messiah. They were looking for someone to come and change their life. And folks, we don't, uh, don't we all go through life sometimes with certain expectations about people and things that sometimes they just don't come true. Right. Don't fill out. We go looking for another then. That may be a good thing for uh, we can be let down, we can be disappointed when we don't see, hear, or get what we think we should. It can also be the wrong thing because the problem may be with us or we don't have to actually have all the facts. So today we live in a world that's constantly looking for another in all aspects of our lives. Let's make sure that we're not being misled, confused, or just plain wrong about the people and things in our lives, especially when it comes to that new life Christ has given to us. Right. Now, thought, there's a dilemma. The John is, John is facing a dilemma in our writing. And there are many reasons for someone to begin looking for another in their lives. The reasons can be as numerous as the individuals themselves. John had a dilemma that was not much different from ours at times, but it focused on Jesus. Look at verse, the first part of verse 3. And here it says, uh, he says, you go, go ask him, are you the one who is to come? To his disciples, you go ask Jesus, are you the one who is to come? There's some doubt there. And if you go over to, Matthew, if you go to the, the, the parallel account of this story, it's found in Luke 7. And, uh, but it's only here in Matthew's account we find that John's in prison. Luke doesn't mention that fact. Now we must remember John is the one who was accustomed to being in the outdoors. We go over to Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Let's see what it said. It talks about the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it's written in Isaiah the prophet. Look, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, a voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the will of the Lord, make his path straight. John was an outdoor man. He stayed outside. He was different in many ways. He worked in the wilderness. He dressed in some rather strange attire. I'm sure brought some both good and bad uh, reports to it. Now, to be a person who's normally on the outside and you put in jail, it's certainly a bummer to be there to start with, but to be there after you've been accustomed to being outside all your life, it was bad. John was probably in a bad situation. His ministry was to preach to the Jewish nation. He, had, he wanted to call them back to God with a repentance from their sin. But his most important job was to prepare the people for the coming of the Lord as it had, had been prophesied. In Isaiah, one of the Now, John at this time had accumulated some disciples of his own, those who had believed his message and followed him in that task of preparing the nation for the Messiah. And several of those disciples came to John and they gave him a report of what Jesus was doing. Now, there were those who believed at that time Jesus and John 
may have been parallel side by side in the ministry, some fallen more, some fallen the other, even in conflicts. Not they themselves were not, but the disciples may have been conflicts. But he was then to hear at this time who the disciples came to report all that Jesus was doing in his ministry. And if you were to lay them side by side, I'm sure Jesus' ministry, especially with the healings and the miracles he performed, was much greater than John's. But John didn't care. We'll find out in just a minute. Now, I'm sure he was greatly encouraged to know that the one he had baptized earlier was doing great things for God. And yet, in the mind, it was a problem. John was preparing people for the Messiah who would free God's people from their bondage, and yet, he's in prison. Yeah. He's in prison. And folks, don't we often wonder about a person from down to the point that we ask ourselves, is he or she really who I think he or she is, or what? We might even think, yes, I see a lot of what I expected, but something is still missing. Just not all there. John has some doubt, but he wasn't ready to throw in the towel. But so, folks, all too often we give up on someone or something before we have satisfied our doubts. Now, doubts should not be the only factor that send us looking for another. It can be a part of it. But having doubts is common, too. And there are ways to settle it. John has a little dilemma here. He's in prison. He can't do anything. He has some doubts about what Jesus is doing. But he's not giving up. Doubts are not giving up. The latter part of verse 3, we find his response. Actually, tells him to go and ask, are you the one who is to come? Or, or should we expect someone else? Or should we look for another? Now, so here John is beginning to face up to the reality of life. Did I make the wrong choice? Did I misplace my trust? Did I expect too much? Now, John's not ready to give up on his calling, but he needs to know how, how he's going to get to the place he is before he's found himself to get to the next place where he needs to be. Now, we're not talking about prison here. It's not, not the physical aspect of work, John, here, but the spiritual aspect. He's concerned with how he thinks about Jesus. One of life's hardest tasks is to move on after a failure. We may have tried and we have tried, but things just did not go as we hoped. And we'll all fail somehow or other. John must respond to his doubts about his support of Jesus. He wants to know should he move on. And move, by moving on, he meant begin to look for someone else to replace him. It's here we need to get inside John's mind. Was he talking about looking around for another person? of the person to be the one that all Israel was looking for and waiting on. If you go to Acts, one of the one of the chief Pharisees told some of the folks when they were complaining about what the disciples were doing, preaching about Jesus Christ, he said to them, you know, just let them go on their way. If it's if, if it's not good, then we'll fall by the wayside. Because there have been those who come before us preaching, claiming that they were the Messiah. Right. But if it's real, if it's right, what they're saying is true, you can't stop it. Amen. There have been those who claim to be the Messiah. So did he go looking for another? Is that what it is? Or, or, did he need to look for something different in Jesus? Not for the person, but something different about Jesus. Did he misread what Jesus had come to do? Now, that is something that we all fall prey to from time to time. We see what we want to see in a person, not what is really there. Right. Now, John had seen the verification of Jesus from God. As the Spirit descended upon him in John chapter 1. <coughs> John chapter 1, verses 29 through 34. So the next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Here is the Lamb of God. He takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I told you about. After me comes a man who has surpassed me because he existed before me. I don't know him, but I come baptized him in water so he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I watched the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he rested on him. I didn't know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water told me, the one you see the Spirit descending and resting on, he's the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. I've seen and testified that he is the Son of God. Yeah. It was what he needed to say, what he, that's what he needed to say, that Jesus was to be preferred or chosen before him. He did, I'm, I, I came to prepare the way for him. He's the one. I'm not even worthy to, to untie his shoes. Amen. Folks, how many times have we had to reaffirm what we first saw in a person? We do sometimes jump on the bandwagons of some new thing which later is not what we thought. 
They are those who like that when they see Jesus. They like what they see, first of all. They may, not, they may like what they hear about his words, but they later realize they're like that rich young ruler. They cannot do what Jesus demands of them. They cannot give it all up to follow him. So John's response was to look again at the one he had called the Son of God. So don't be surprised if John had doubts. We have doubts. Right. We need to respond to our doubts about our relationship with time and Jesus. But do as John ask your questions. Jesus will not fail to answer. Amen. You can reaffirm. Yes. Let's look at, that, look at that answer in verses 4 through 6. So Jesus told his, his disciples now, You go and report to John on all you've seen and all you've heard. Now here the blind see, the lame walk, those with skin disease or the lepers are healed. The deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor are told the good news. Now what we must see at first is Jesus is not offended at John's request. Many of us, we get our dander up over having our motives, our efforts, or our words questioned. But Jesus merely told them to go back and tell John what they had seen, what they had heard in his ministry. And Jesus lists those things found in his words as he read from the book of the temple. He read Luke, uh, uh, from Isaiah chapter uh, 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news of the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. What Jesus leaves out in this account of his actions to John is the freeing of the captives. He does not tell them to go and talk about the fact that he's freed the captives. Now, Jesus was not a political or military leader. Right. And when he talked about freeing the captives, evidently, that's what they thought. Well, be here comes the Messiah, they're going to go come in here with his sword and his white horse, and he's going to free us from Rome. So, the right. kingdom, Israel will be great again. That's not what it came for. So he, didn't, he left that out. His work was spiritual. He was not to set up a literal earthly kingdom. And folks, we must be careful not to assign to Jesus' actions in our lives that which he has never claimed. So I was in prison for preaching the truth. And this was always going to be a problem for the followers of Jesus. Yes. And John needed to know that even in prison, he was free in Christ. Amen. John's work today... Uh, Jesus' work today is still spiritual in nature. In nature. We must not expect to, uh, him to provide for our earthly needs or desires, just as he did not for John. John ultimately died as a political prisoner, but he got the answer to the question he needed to know. He did not need to go look in front of others, for he had found his man in Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. While there are times when we should go looking for another because of our failed expectations, folks, there are also times we just need to ask the questions that will eliminate our doubts and solve our dilemma. Right. And Jesus will always be and exceed all that we need or expect. He's always there. He's the man. Right. And there are some distinctives we find that kept John this particular dilemma he was in. He had legitimate concerns and he wanted to know if Jesus he said, if Jesus is not the one he's looking for, he needs to begin looking for another. Right. He wanted to know for sure if Jesus had a distinction. Being the man, he was going to die for. Now we may have honest doubts at times about the one we pledge to follow and to follow through this life until death. Because that's what we do in this century when we get saved. We're telling him, Lord, thank you for saving me. It will make you Lord of my life. And that is the eternal thing that lasts forever. Yeah. So Jesus' words help us to realize that he, was, he does have all the distinctives of the only one we are to trust and obey in this life. In verse 5, you need to put first things first. Go and report to the first five. Uh, he said, you tell them all that you found. And you read, uh, those words, read those words by Isaiah 61 again. But I certainly believe John understood the words of Jesus as they were reported to him. We need to say that, that they said in order what we ought to do in our service for him. John was busy preaching about the need for repentance from lost and his sins of the people. He's talking about primarily the people of Israel. Excuse me. It's that time of the year, folks. They had been guilty. I'm talking about Israel. Israel had been guilty of idolatry and chasing after other gods. They also angered God by failing to understand that worship was more than just merely offering lip service and some sacrifice. Right. God was looking for spiritual responses, not physical ones. 
And we see that in the manner in which Jesus quotes Isaiah 61 in verse 1, uh, he changes the order of the words. And he lists the preaching of the good news of the poor at the last of those words instead of at the first, as it's found in Isaiah. Did he forget the order? Now here, did Jesus forget the order of the words? No. Or did he say something important to us in changing them? Yes. Folks, we may at times feel that what we do in reaching out to our community with food, by, by receiving our offerings to help those who need that help uh, in various ways, or the other things that we do to meet physical needs of people, sometimes we think about those to be inferior to or less than sharing the gospel. Now, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> but it was in doing the miracles of healing and helping those in need that opened the door for Jesus to preach the good news. Yes. And if he had went to preach the good news first, before meeting their physical needs, wouldn't have had the success he had by meeting their physical needs, right. and then preaching. Amen. Now, Peter sitting in prison had been preaching repentance. We don't see him doing things, the miracles, the healing, the feeding that Jesus did. So he's saying, John, we're going to put it in order. Uh, don't feel bad about the fact that uh, I'm doing the miracles, but not doing the stuff. People are getting saved, like you think. So meeting, meeting the physical needs of the lost is many times the first thing in reaching them for Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. John wanted to see the nation repent and turn to God. And Jesus told him that we may need to put the physical needs first and then share the good news. Amen. Folks, it's still hard to tell people that Jesus loves them when they're hungry, thirsty, or sick. Yes. If we don't meet all the needs of the people, they may begin looking for another who can never reach that people. Yes. In verses 7 through 11, Jesus kind of goes off a little tangent, but he had a reason. In verses 7 through 11, he recognizes the value of the words of John. He takes time to recognize John the Baptist and the work he's doing for God. He said, what did you go out in the wilderness expecting to see? When you heard about John, this in the wilderness, what did you go to see? Did you go to see a reed swaying in the wind? Well, did, you, did you go out to see a man dressed in soft clothes or fine clothes? He said, you know what? Those soft clothes or fine clothes, you find those in the king's palace. You don't go to the wilderness to find them. Well, did you go out to see a prophet? Well, I tell you, he's a prophet, all right. More than a prophet. So he's, he's setting John up, putting him in John's place of special recognition, if you will. And he asked them, why did you go? Were they expecting to see a man in a three-piece suit? Blood lights, orchestra, loudspeakers, and a gas of thousands? Well, he says, what you got was a man in overalls and broke gas. Yeah. Doing the work of preparing the way for me. You were looking for someone you'd seen in a palace or on the pages of People's Magazine. But John is more important than those folks. Yeah. He, is, he is one not easily swayed by public opinion. He's not seduced by the world's glamour. And he's not seeking his own popularity. Yes, he's important in the work of my ministry, and he's great among the men of the world. Matter of fact, he's the greatest among the men of the world. But he's less than the least in the kingdom of God. John, as great as he was to Jesus in the world, he was still less than one, the lowly one who said, Yes, to Jesus Christ was in the kingdom of God. Folks, Jesus knows who we are and what we do in this life for him. But in the end, it's sharing the gospel that moves men into God's kingdom. Amen. And that is the most important thing for us. Amen. John was good. What we do for Christ is important. But the kingdom, the lordship of Christ, and the citizens of the kingdom trumps all other considerations. Amen. Right. We may wonder about our value to Christ and to his church, whether we're important to the works of the church, or if we're doing what we're supposed to do. But Jesus knows all about us. And he knows how important we are to him. Yeah. He will use us just the way we are if we're committed to the work of the kingdom. Yeah. And we don't meet the expectations of the world in our looks. That is no reason to go looking for another. For God knows sir, He knows us and He accepts us just as we are. Amen. In verses 16 through 17, we find that little is changed. Let's drop on down to verse 16 and 17. To what then shall I compare this generation? Why well, it's like children sitting in the marketplace who call out to each other. We played the flute for you, but you didn't dance. We sang a lament, but you didn't mourn. So Jesus 
tells the people tells the people of his day that you're just like children. Now children, he said, have three characteristics that are similar to our age. Uh, the characteristics of the children he's talking about there. He has seen these, and Jesus has seen these in the marketplace as he walked about. He says, and they sit. They sit. And folks, is there not something wrong with children who want to sit? Rather than stand and be up and out and out doing that. If we see a child sitting, are you okay? Can I sit? And we may we may like the fact they're doing that. We know something's wrong when they do that. We know they want to be entertained before they want to be involved. In, in, in Sounds like a lot of church members. Sit, entertain. Then he said, they won't dance when the music's played. And these weren't Baptists, I'm sure. Baptists, yeah, okay. <laughs> but those folks are constantly looking for something else to move. Now, in our churches, people are never satisfied with the style of worship, the music, or the message. So they move the churches through to find that which moves. Right. The music's not what they want. They say, we play, we use that. And then Jesus says, even when they, when they hear the funeral dirge, it doesn't stir them to compassion. Is it not true, folks? People are just not moved by the sorrow of others. It's yeah. hard to get people to understand and feel the sorrow of others because the attention is always on the same. The similarities, folks, between the ages are remarkable. But it points out the fact that man's basic nature has not changed. There's always the, going to be the need for those who will share the love and compassion of Jesus. With that world that knows him not. That acts like these children Jesus is just talking about. Now John the Baptist did what he was called to do. He pointed out the needs of the people in his day. The need to repent of his sins. And then he pointed them to Jesus Christ. Go alone to meet that need. And our world still needs to hear the gospel that changes lives meets the most basic needs of all mankind. There's no need to go looking for another to meet the needs of the people of our day. For man's heart and man's needs are always going to be the same. And it's Jesus alone who can change. Amen. Yes. Jesus is the only one who can meet the needs of all those in our world through his people, through us. We are to meet the physical needs and to share the good news with all the world. Amen. Jesus knows, he recognizes our words in the kingdom. We may not feel very worthy, he knows what we do. He knows that we have a space, a, a, a place to fulfill and a ministry, a ministry to do and, and the tools we have been equipped to do. He sends us into a world that is similar to his own and to a people who need him desperately. Amen. Still is. Ours is, a, is an age where people are constantly looking for another in their lives. Always looking for something we don't have. They're looking for the next great person and the next great thing. Now, we are quickly changed from those who have always been there for us and from those things that have worked for ages. And the most important aspect of our lives is spiritual. We are never satisfied. As a matter of fact, in Ephesians 4.14, Paul says of his audience that they were chasing every wind of doctrine and every new thing. How many, how many new religious groups and teachings are coming up every day? Thousands of those. Yeah. You can find what you want somewhere and just go, go, go along with it. While we're not just to sit on what we have accomplished, we are not to disregard that which brought us here. John was not going to give up on Jesus without satisfying his doubts. And we may feel that we made a mistake in some aspects of our faith in Jesus, but folks, we, can, we are to remember that doubts are fundamental in our, our, our human lives. They're always going to be there. There's something about it. John was satisfied enough that Jesus asked him that he was not going to reject the one of whom he had said. John he must increase. I know he must be Right. He deserves all. Amen. Amen. And Jesus is the only one who is worthy of our love, our honor, our worship, our obedience. And Jesus is the only one who can meet the needs of the lost and dying world. There is no need to go looking for another. Like John, let's embrace the one who saved us and called us to serve him. Amen. Kind of looking forward, folks, to what the beginning tonight. In the uh, story from the, uh, I guess it's from the, the it's actually on, on TV in some respect. Look again on YouTube. So the chosen, from all aspects they find, it gives a kind of a fairly accurate portrayal of life during the time of Christ.
and some of the various individuals that he dealt with and that we read about and know in Scripture. Uh, I'm asking you tonight to try to figure out how we will do it. Uh, let's, let's do this. Let's kind of embrace this as a way of understanding more about Jesus. More about those people that he dealt with, what, uh, how important they were to him. And as we read about them, let me get a little different picture or a greater picture of what they were doing in the lives that they had. Like sometimes we just read the names and they, they don't really give us a picture we need. You don't really see them as they really were. As people of flesh and blood, and the same problems, the same day-to-day uh, sorrows, failures, and successes that we have. So I think it's a good help to us to remember that as uh, we think about John the Baptist and his doubt. Greatest man, born of woman, said his doubts about Christ. But he settled him, he died willingly, the one who called him. Let's be the same kind of people to give ourselves. No need to wait for Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's that. You would try to hit those guys on the break. This is a time to reflect what Jesus, Jesus is doing in our lives and through the Holy Spirit's leadership. Let's make sure we're reaffirmed who he is. To us, and that He is always with us. Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you again for what we learn. We thank you, Lord, that sometimes you do come in our, our days and some doubts and some feelings, Father, maybe of frustration, not really understanding exactly who we are and what we're supposed to do. It's a part of the human psyche, Father, is something we cannot change. We thank you, Father, for being accepting of us and loving of us in spite of our faults and our failures and our flaws and satisfying those. Doubts, Father, in a very real and wonderful way. We love you. We thank you, Father, for putting up with us as we go from day to day. We're not, we know we're the people yet that we're supposed to be. We fail very often. Thank you for watching us and helping us to get up and go again, being very gracious and merciful in your love for us. We thank you, Father, that you give us a gift of talent to use. Lord, you've been very plain in what we should do in service and ministry to you. Thank you for our church. Thank you, Father, what all of our church has made. And to reach out to minister, minister to the world. Needs to know very much to hear about Jesus Christ and his love for them. Well, we know that many times that means meeting the spirit of physical need before we can meet the spiritual need. It must be sensitive to know, Father, how to do it. In all things, it's all said and done. May we receive all the glory and praise of God. He's the only one that's worthy, Father. We love you. Thank you for it. Thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Wait for that time. will be a better year. Start from Chosen. Hope you come and join us in 10 to 5. We're going to have a prayer for church. Anything else? Before you sit. It's the first of the month. <laughs> Comes around like clockwork. Mm-hmm. All right, anything else? Come on. Lord, we want to thank you for this beautiful uh, day you've given us, Lord. We thank you for the message you brought to Brother Willard and, and how it was so wonderfully put to us. Lord, bless us all as we go to our homes and bring us all back safely tonight. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to get him here today. <laughs> It's, it's a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um,